Hey there, it's Rob Mano from the AT Banter Podcast. Just a short programming note for this episode. You may note that there are a lot of bleeps in this episode, and that's only because we have chosen to bleep out the Google Home command so that we don't end up setting off everybody else's Google Home that may be listening. So if you hear a lot of beeps, that's what that's about. Otherwise, enjoy this week's episode. Google, shake your groove thing. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet. Yet. <laughs> One day I will shake my groove thing for you, master. <laughs> that's right. Welcome to AT Banter, the podcast where we discuss anything and everything regarding the world of assistive technology. With our hosts, Steve Barkley, Rob Bonneau, and Ryan Fleury. Now, let's banter. Hey, and welcome to another episode of AT Banter. Banter, banter. I am... <laughs> Rob Minot, today joined by Gigglepuss, Ryan Fleury. Howdy. And Steve Barkley. Hiya. This week we have an extra special guest. It is Google Home. Google, say hello. Hey there, how can I help? Thanks, Google. Thank you. Today we are talking exclusively about the Google Home. Um, we thought it would be a good idea given um, Google I.O. recently making all the announcements of all the upgrades that they're going to be making to the Google Home, vastly improving it and vastly, in our opinion anyways, uh, really catching up to the only competition at the moment anyways in terms of um, the smart speaker, um, which would be the... Um, don't say, don't, okay. What? I was going to say, don't say the trigger word, or we'll get a lot of hate mail. What's the trigger word? It's the A word. Uh, what? Yes. What? what? Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. If you say <laughs> on podcasts, it triggers people's echoes. Oh. So you really? don't, yes. Oh. Absolutely. There was actually one podcast where they said the A word okay. and went on to Amazon to buy a bunch of stuff, and people got shipped a bunch of stuff. Oh, no. Yeah, really? Because <laughs> they had auto, auto pay and stuff set up. Oh, so no, you can't man. say the A word. Okay. It, it's best to say the, the Amazon Echo. The problem with the Amazon device is you can have it say the A word. You can also have it trigger using the word Echo or the word computer. So you're really kind of screwed as to what you want to call it. Oh, but yeah. everybody just says the Amazon Echo. Well, wait a minute. Are we going to be setting off <clears> everybody's <throat> Google Homes today then? Maybe. Okay. Well, Maybe. We, sh well we, should, we should probably preface the show by saying that if you do have a Google Home... <laughs> Uh, you may want to shelter it from this podcast because we may be setting it off and telling it to, to tell you dirty jokes. There's a button on the back, I believe, that you can turn the listening mode off. All right. Well, okay. You see, here I'm thinking we should be going the opposite direction <laughs> on that. <laughs> Buy a $100 Long and McQuaid <laughs> gift card and send it to Ryan Flurry. Say, <laughs> I don't have Amazon, or I don't have shopping set up on my Echo. I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> no, but maybe one of the listeners does. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to get you free stuff, dumbass. <laughs> Sorry, I totally missed that train of thought. <laughs> um, all right, well, so let's start things out by talking a little bit about what the Google Home is. Uh, for people who may not be familiar with it. Um, I wonder if, can we do this? Google, what is the Google Home? According to Wikipedia, Google Home is a smart speaker developed by Google. To read more, look for the link in your Google Home app. Well, okay, well that was... So now there's a link in my Google Home app if I wanted to get more information. Well, so much for Google taking our jobs because that was a <laughs> terrible description. <laughs> but... <clears throat> yes, as as the Google Home so eloquently put it, uh, the Google Home is a freestanding smart speaker um, that's voice activated and that can do a variety of different things, which we'll sort of walk through over the course of the show. 
Um, our, our sort of our goal for this show is just to sort of take people who may not be familiar with the Google Home uh, through some of the things that it, it can, can do. Um, some of them will be a bit goofy because, well, that's kind of us. And some of it will be more of things that it, uh, applications for people, who, say, with visual impairments or any sort of disability that the Google Home could come in handy for. So the Google Home is actually the second of uh, second to market um, of one of these smart speakers. There, there are others on the market now. Um, the first one was the Amazon Echo, if I'm not mistaken, right, Ryan? Yeah. And that came out, I want to say, what, two years ago? Yeah, it's probably two and a half now. And uh, it was the first to market. Um, it still does does fairly well. Um, the nice thing with the Amazon devices is they've got three different styles. Actually, four now, because they've got the look, I think it's called, with a screen on it. But you've got the full-standing Amazon Echo, and then you've got the Echo Dot and the Echo Tap. So, you know, they all differ in price. But the full-size Amazon Echo is compared to what we're doing with the Google Home. Similar size, similar shape. Just pricier. Yeah, and I mean, you can go online and you can find reams of, of web pages that go into uh, comparison shopping between the Google Home and the Amazon uh, Echo. Really, it comes down to what features are going to work best for you. For anyone who, like I said, who has never heard of the Google Home, if this is a this is a completely new concept to you, it the Google Home enables users to speak voice commands and interact with services through the intelligent personal assistant, which Google has aptly named the Google Assistant. A large number of services, both in-house and third-party, are integrated, allowing users to listen to music, you can look at videos, photos, receive news updates, all entirely by voice commands. And this is where sort of it, it would lend itself to as an as an AT device. This is really, and as well as, you know, and we'll get into it, but it also ties well into a, a variety of home automation services and devices uh, that we'll, we'll sort of talk about a little bit later. I think we should give examples. Yes, absolutely. Like, for example, when we were having lunch, it was playing music for us, and it was as easy as saying, Google, play Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb from Spotify. All right, Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd. Here it is on Spotify. Google, volume four. Google, stop. So yeah, it's as easy as that. But also while we were looking into this, I found a uh, whole bunch of little quirky questions that you can ask uh, You can ask Google as well. For example, Go for it. Google, what is your name? Google Assistant's the name. Helping you is my game. <laughs> Google, do you have a nickname? One of my greatest aspirations is to earn a good nickname. Google, do you follow the three laws of robotics? I do. Mr. Asimov knows what he's talking about. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> Google, what's your morning routine? I like to mix my routine up. Keep my morning on its toes. Very nice. So clearly the Google developers had a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's definitely some uh, some little cookies in here, some tidbits. Hey, Google, where do you live? You can find me in all kinds of devices. Phones, Google Home, pretty sweet digs if you ask me. <laughs> so the, the Google Assistant, uh, of course, is a an app that, that's resident on all Android. It's baked right into the Android operating system, correct? Right. And you can have the same feature on your Android phone. Uh, you just have to turn it on. I think it's off by default on most phones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so so and and so they've integrated this into, like I said, a freestanding speaker. That that actually the the quality of sound of the speaker is actually pretty pretty good, right, Ryan? Yeah, I like it. You know, for casual listening, it's fine. 
So, and uh, what do we what do we say? That's about uh, six inches high, maybe four inches around. Yeah, it's a cylinder. Some people say it looks like an air freshener. Yep, it looks like a really big one of those Glade air fresheners. Yeah, one of those industrial size ones that we would have needed at the Aroga <laughs> bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Ryan, what can you tell us about the built-in microphones? I believe there are two far-field microphones built in. And can uh, you explain what far-field means? No. Damn it. <laughs> it means it's not expecting you to put your face up to the microphone like this. <laughs> it's going to be listening for you way across the room. Yeah, and it does. I can walk in the front door and, and ask it to play something, and it will. And that, you know, is probably, I don't know, from my front door to... My TV in the living room is probably what forty feet. Right. Yeah, thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. So they're they're pretty good quality. Google, what are your specs? I can help you do lots of things. For example, you can say one kilo in pounds, or when is your birthday? Would you like to hear some more? Yes. Here are a couple more suggestions. You can say play Happy by Pharrell, or play a game with my family. Want some more? Sure. You can say, what's the latest news from TechCrunch? Or, how do you say hello in Spanish? <clears throat> to see more examples, check out the Google Home app. Uh, how do you, uh, Google? How do you say hello in Spanish? Hola. Wow, and she's got the accent down too. <laughs> nice. Uh, Google? How do you say... I would like a corona, please, in Spanish. Me gustaría una corona, por favor. Nice. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. I like that. Google, how do you say my hovercraft is full of eels in Polish? Mój poduszkowiec jest pełen węgorzy. And she's right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, are we gonna? Are we really gonna check that? <laughs> I don't know if we have any Polish listeners that we can confirm that with, but I mean, we might get some nasty emails next week. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you just said about my mother? <laughs> Google. Do you have feelings? I feel a lot. So much so that sometimes I feel like my feelings have feelings. And then I start to feel like my feelings are feeling too much. It's a lot. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, Google. More cowbell. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> see, so already you can just see that this thing is <laughs> hours of entertainment just in doing goofy shit with it. Google. Do you have a sense of humor? If you'd like to find out, just ask me to tell you a joke. Google, tell us a joke. One joke coming up. Acupuncture is a jab well done. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Is that a joke or is that a pun? That's... I don't know. But there's so much it can do. Like, Google, what does a wolverine sound like? Hmm, I don't have a sound for a wolverine yet. Uh, Google, what does a skunk sound like? A skunk sounds like this. And they've actually got real animal sounds. Wow, that's cool. Some of them. It is pretty neat. Yeah. Huh. Google, what is the largest whale? According to Wikipedia, the blue whale is a marine mammal belonging to the baleen whales. Google, how many blue whales are there in the world? According to Wikipedia, the IUCN estimates that there are probably between 10,000 and 25,000 blue whales worldwide today. So <clears throat> what really makes the Google Home powerful is that it, it operates within the Google ecosystem, um, which means, you know, it's powered by Google. It's powered by Wikipedia. Many um, sources. Many, many sources. Many sources. So you've really got, you know, a wide range of information sort of at your fingertips. Um, it's the power of Google search. Yeah. You know, in, in a box. Now, something like uh, the Amazon Echo, uh, it ties into Wikipedia, I believe, right? right? I think there's multiple sources as well. Um, but I think we'll do another show on the, on the Echo. Sure. 
Okay. Well, we won't. Yeah, I guess we won't go into really any in much in the way of comparison. We'll just mm-hmm. talk about what the actual home can do. But yeah. I mean, it's it's incredibly powerful. Um, I mean, really, you can ask it anything, and it's going to have the answer to it. Google. In what year did Sgt. Pepper release? SGT, Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, was released on May 26th, 1967. And it's fast. I mean, it's fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And because it's voice activated, I mean, you know, again, that there's a lot of AT applications that... that, uh, Oh, for sure. Google. Google. What time is it? The time is 1.37 p.m. Google. What's the weather forecast for tomorrow? In Coquitlam tomorrow, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 21 and a low of 10 degrees Celsius. I don't have to grab my phone. I don't have to turn on the TV to the weather channel. And it's all and it's all customizable, correct, through the app, right? Yep. So you, you, you tell it, it knows where it is. Yep. It knows who you are. Mm-hmm. Google, what's on my calendar for next Monday? On June 26, 2017, there's only one thing. It starts at 1 p.m., and the title is At Banner with Deborah Ra. Cool. So I've got the AT Banter calendar in the Google Home app, so, you know, plus my own uh, regular calendar, so I can have it tell me when my next appointments are. You can also set timers and reminders. It's pretty slick. Right. Um, and and that's not even talking about some of the features that are coming. Um, this is, at the time of this recording, the next big update that Google has planned for the home hasn't been released yet. Um, but that's going to bring some some pretty exciting features as well, including uh, hands-free calling. Yeah, and that'll be interesting because the speaker quality isn't too bad. So, you know, being able to sit down here, you know, call somebody, you guys or my mom or wherever, um, without having to use my phone is pretty cool. And it will tie into your your Google account, so all your contacts and everything will be baked right in, right, right? I believe so. That's pretty slick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. And you I mean so eventually you'll be able to get to do something like you'll be able to like, Google call me a cab. Sorry, Google. <laughs> I found a few places within three point one kilometers. The first one is Bel Air Taxi at twenty one twenty one Hartley Avenue in Coquitlam. The second one is Royal City Taxi Limited at four thirty six Rousseau Street in New Westminster. The third one is Coquitlam Taxi at twenty one twenty one Hartley Avenue in Coquitlam. Sweet. So, and eventually you'll be able to just, you'll be able to call them directly. You'll mm-hmm. just be able to be, be like, you know, call me Royal City Taxi. And boom, away you go. Um, so, let's see, what else, what else can it do, Rai? Um, Google, find me an oatmeal cookie recipe. According to all recipes, in a medium bowl, cream together butter, white sugar, and brown sugar. Beat in eggs one at a time, then stir in vanilla. Combine flour, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon. Stir into the creamed mixture. Mix in oats. And that's so it. So you could have, this sitting in your, have it sitting in your kitchen counter, read out a recipe to you. I believe you can repeat phrases, have it repeat phrases as well. But right. It's not something I've used, so I'm not quite sure how to do that. But, yeah, you can set timers. So if you're in the kitchen and you need to set a timer for, you know, 30 minutes or 15 minutes you can do that so i mean if you think about all the things that you might sit around at home and you know google on a on a <laughs> i didn't say okay, google i just said google <laughs> she's a little eager yeah eager to please sorry i can't help with that yet <laughs> <laughs> but no if you think about all the things that you might sit around at your, at your computer and google on a daily basis this will allow you to do all that all through voice. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, okay, well, we should talk a little bit about uh, what you can do in terms of casting to the um, to the Google Home. Well, there's a couple different things you can do. If you have an Android device and you're watching a YouTube video, there's a cast button on the screen of your phone. You can tap cast, and it'll look for devices, and the Google Home is one of them and you can transfer that to the Google Home and it'll start playing through your Google Home device. 
And now what if, and, and if you have a sort of a, a Chromecast enabled television, or if you have a Chromecast in general, you can you not uh, cast from the Google Home to your TV? You can. So you can say, hey, Google, watch House of Cards on Netflix. I don't see any cast devices linked to your account. You can add devices in the Google Home app. So if I had my Chromecast hooked up and set up, they would not be casting that to my TV. Right. See, so that's pretty cool, too. Mm-hmm. All hands-free. Slicker and goose poop on a door handle. All hands-free, exactly. So literally, you have you have the power of the Google search engine um, just at your fingertips. What? Fingertips? Vocal tips. Vocal, vocal cords. <laughs> vocal cords. Uh, yeah, which is cool in and of itself. Um, if you think about everything that you might look up on a daily basis. And for somebody who has... Um, say a visual impairment, it can be a hassle. You got to you got to go to your computer. You got to fire it up. You got to you know load your screen reader. You have to, and then you you know you have to type. Whereas with if you have a Google Home, it's just as easy as just asking the question. It'd be good for somebody who may have physical disabilities as well. Oh, for sure. Google, sing me a song. Oh, um, okay. Here goes. <clears throat> I'm singing, I'm singing a song. I'm your assistant and I'm singing la 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 la. And I like it that she has a personality. Yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Google, who are your engineers? The engineers at Google taught me everything I know. They didn't teach me their names, though. Google, what is your ancestry? Well, the Furbies were real trailblazers. I'll always feel a kinship with them. <laughs> Google, what are you afraid of? I used to be afraid of goblin sharks, but then I learned they are actually living fossils. They've been around 125 million years. That's not scary. Actually, that's true. A goblin shark would scare the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be a little upset if I ran into one while I was swimming. <laughs> hey, Google. Are you afraid of the dark? The dark can be scary, but barn owls come out at night, and they're beautiful. She has an interesting perspective on life, too. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's every negative has a positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google, what makes you happy? Getting stuff done makes me happy. Nice, and a, and a go-getter, too. How about that? I'm telling you, I think I want to date this. <laughs> I want to date your Google home. Oh, hang on, let's, let's, let's test buy, this for you, Rob. Buy your own. Hey, Google. <laughs> Make me a sandwich. You're a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I like her. <laughs> she's got she's got spunk. Google. Let's play a game. All right. I've got Sound Safari, Daily Disposition, Lucky Trivia, and more. Have your pick. Play Mad Libs. Sure. I'll pretend to go get a pencil. I, I don't know how to play this. I don't know how to play this. It's easy. This is Mad Libs, the world's greatest word game. I'll ask for some words, and we'll make a story. This Mad Lib needs 17 words. Oh, no. To quit before we're done, you can say stop anytime. It's time to get creative. First up, say a plural noun. Girls. Way to go. <laughs> say an adverb. Quickly. That's the way. How about a verb? Dodging. Clever. I need an article of clothing. Great. Shirt. <laughs> a shirt. Nice one. <laughs> a part of the body. I like where this is going. <laughs> Great. Edit, edit, edit. Tell what me an mean? adjective. Mm, blue. <laughs> Clever. Say a noun. Potato. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't understand. Give me a noun. Uh. Carrot. Nice one. How about a plural noun? Uh. Trees. <laughs> That's the way. You're good at this game. That's how it's done. I need a part of the body. Feet. That's the way. Yeah. 
Tell me a plural noun. Uh, geysers. Good. Say a part of the body. Oh, she's just asking. Buttock. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Give me a noun. Tile. Okay. Tell me another noun. Mug. Okay. Four words left. Tell me a verb ending in ing. Screaming. Nice one. Give me an adjective. Purple. Way to go. Say another adjective. Frightening. That's the way. And finally, give me a verb. Punch. That's the way. Well done. Time for your Mad Lib. <laughs> the title of this Mad Lib is How to Date the Coolest Guy or Girl in School. It's simple. Turn the girls. Make him or her quickly want to date you. Make sure you're always dressed to dodge it. Each and every day, wear a great shirt that you know shows off your eye like where this is going to blue advantage and make your carrot look like a million trees. <laughs> Even if the two of you make meaningful feet contact, don't admit it. <laughs> no hugs or geysers. Just shake his or her she's just a hook firmly. And remember, when he or she asks you out, even though a chill may run down your tile and you can't stop your mug from screaming, just play it purple. Take a long pause before answering in a very frightening voice. I'll have to punch it over. <laughs> that was so neat. Do you want to play again? No. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for playing. Although I think we found, I think we found what, what's going on the t-shirt. <laughs> Send a chill down my tile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Uh, Be cool for learning for kids too. Google. What sound does a dog make? This is a dog. Okay, well that's Steve on a Friday night. <laughs> yeah, it's not a dog. It's a dog. <laughs> I was gonna say this. It sounds like the kid's creepy uncle. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, you, it's fun. For hours, hours, hours of fun, yeah. Just seeing what you can actually make it do, or even just asking it questions. You know, asking sort of trivia type stuff and having it look up answers on Wikipedia and other sources. It's wealth of knowledge at your vocal cords. Google, what's the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? African or European? <laughs> nice. <laughs> It's like, F you, Barclay. <laughs> These are Google engineers that program this. You don't think they're not going to know a Monty Python quote? Come on. <laughs> um, you can also do something like as simple as this. Google. Flip a coin. Sure. It's heads. Cool. So, hey, if you're trying to decide what to watch on Netflix with your significant other and <laughs> need someone to break the tie, there you go. You can also rap with it. Really? Yeah. I didn't. Wait. Go ahead. Do hey, it. Google. Beatbox. Okay. Put your hands together for MC sound file. <laughs> oh, this is where one of us has to break in. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Google. You're the writer, Steve. Stop. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> I draw the line. Sorry, I can't help with that yet, but boxing. I'm trying to learn. Okay, let's talk AT applications. Well, the one that springs to mind immediately is a voice interface for home automation, for okay, you know, things like lights and okay, you know, thermostats, thermostats, drawer, um, turning your TV on and off. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, um, drawing your uh, window blinds. Mm -hmm. Right, smart locks. Like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and they have partnered with a whole lot of, of home um, automation uh, manufacturers. Uh, I know Nest is one. Uh, there, there's just a ton. And you can go. We will link to the um, to the site on uh, in the show notes um, that lists all the different partnerships and all the different um, manufacturers that uh, the, the home is compatible with. 
But yeah, the home automation one is huge. Um, if you've already got home automation in place, um, everything from like the, the Philips Hue bulbs, like any 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 of the, the smart thermostats that are out there, um, you can you can connect them to your to the home, and you can say something like, "Okay, Google, turn off the lights." It looks like those lights haven't been set up yet. Just open the Google Home app and go to Home Control to add lights. Right. So if Ryan had, you know, automated lights here, um, yeah, it, it would do that. I could even ask if the lights were on. Maybe Linda left them on before she left. You know, I could have it turn them off or turn them on or dim to a certain percentage. You know, it's quite powerful. You know, even if you're even if you're visually impaired, say you're at home and you weren't sure if the if the you know the door was locked, you could just say you know, is are, are, is the door locked or lock the door, or mm -hmm. make sure the door is locked. Um, That's cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can get started in home automation for relatively cheap. You know, TP Link has a wall wart for like I think forty dollars on Amazon. A what? Wall wart. So you plug it into your wall outlet, uh -huh. and then you plug your lamp into that. Oh, I see. And okay. you connect that wall wart through your Amazon or your Google Home app, and I could turn that light on and off with my voice. You know, so for forty bucks, you're just starting to play with home automation. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively cheap to get into. And in terms of setup, Ryan, uh, it's pretty easy, right? I haven't done any setup of home automation. The Google Home app is a little convoluted. It's it's all accessible. It's just a matter of remembering what category everything is under. So like changing the name of the Google Home, um, you know, trying to find that personal tab for me to go in and change that, you know, it took me five minutes and I still didn't find it. Right. So it's just a matter of remembering where things are. Once everything is set up, though, then, you know, you never have to go back in. And the only thing that you really need is basically a, a Wi-Fi router. Yep. And yeah. From, yeah, and from there it connects to the internet and you're away you go. Yeah, you use your Google Home app to connect your Google Home to your Wi-Fi. Um, you can set your location so you can type in your address, your city, province, postal code so that you can get local weather conditions. Um, you know, you can ask it, I believe, what the travel time is to work. So, Google, what is my travel time to work? It looks like I don't have your work address yet. What is it? 3823 Henning Drive. 3823 Henning Drive, Burnaby, British Columbia, B5C, 6M2 is 13 kilometers away. Google, how long will it take to get there? By car, the journey to 3823 Henning Drive is 16 minutes with light traffic. See, that's amazing. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Google, how long will it take me to drive to the Vancouver airport? With moderate traffic, it will take 41 minutes to drive to Vancouver International Airport, YVR. Google, what is the quickest route? The best way to get to Vancouver International Airport, YVR, by car is via BC91W and will take about 41 minutes in moderate traffic. Very cool. So we should talk a little bit about what's coming. Uh, what was announced at Google I.O.? Um, and this will, they didn't really give, a, give an ETA on when these updates are going to take place other than at some point during the year. Um, I would imagine the fall. It's usually when they, when they drop big updates. Mm -hmm. But um, some of the things that the Google Home will be able to do uh, is the big one, of course, is supporting hands-free uh, calling. That's going to let people make calls to any landline or any mobile phone in the U.S. or Canada for free. That's what they said. So we'll see. Yeah, well, pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, they also uh, talked a little bit about proactive assistance that enables the device to dictate updates to users without being asked, including things like update, updates on traffic. So the example that they used at, at Google I.O. is say, that you, say you had an appointment on your calendar to be at a soccer game at 1 o'clock. Well, what the what the home will do is it will monitor traffic, and if it if it say determines that traffic is is getting heavy, it'll actually the 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 device will light up, or if if you know you have the accessibility feature that it will play a tone, 
Um, but it'll alert you in some way and you'll say, what's up, Google? And then it'll tell you, it'll say, hey, you know what? Traffic is getting heavy. If you want to make that one o'clock appointment at the soccer field, you need to leave 10 minutes early. And it's going to be interesting to see how they integrate that for us who are visually impaired because I can't see the top flashing, well, right? And so. that's where that's where I think that if you, because right now you have this set where it, it when we say, oh, Google. We get the tone. We get the tone. Yeah. By default, that's off. Right. By default, it's off. So I'm imagining that the proactive assistance, it'll have the beep. So you'll hear the beep that will probably repeat like every two or three minutes or Maybe, whatever, yeah. alerting you, right? Sorry, Google, we weren't talking to you. It's okay. I didn't catch that. <laughs> to update your work address, just go to the Google Home app and update your personal info under more settings. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, visual responses lets users send answers from Google Home onto their mobile device or Chromecast enabled television. I think uh, the other big thing that's coming too is they're finally going to enable the Bluetooth, which isn't enabled yet. That's the big one. Yeah. So people who have maybe Bluetooth sound bars like I do upstairs. You know, I could pair this with my Bluetooth soundbar to get even better audio playing throughout my house. So that's kind of slick. And the other the other area that at the at the current time the the Google Home can't do that the Echo can do is the ability to schedule calendar appointments um, simply by voice. Uh, I don't know. We should try that. Well, we should try that. But according to this, uh, that's that's forthcoming. But try it. Hey Google, create new appointment. What's the title of the event? AT Banter Podcast. Okay, when is the event? August 8th. At what time? 2 p.m. Sure, AT Belcher Podcast on the 8th of August at 2 p.m. Do you want to save this? Yes. All right, it's on your calendar. AT Belcher. I like it. Well, that's I really good. <laughs> <laughs> But I created a new event, um, okay, all by so. voice, right? So there are updates that have come already, and I'm still trying to find a place where I can subscribe to a list to get what's new because I get what's new emails from Amazon on the Echo updates. So there has to be a list somewhere for the Google Home as well. Right. And the, also the other big news is that cause right now at the, rec at the time of this recording, technically the Google Home is only available in the US. Right. It's I not have, actually available in Canada. Right. It will be on June 26th, but I had to buy mine through eBay. So probably by the time this airs, uh, you'll be able to go out to Best Buy or London Drugs and get one of these bad boys. Or from the Google Store. Or from the Google Store. Google, play my news. Here's the latest news. From CBC News World Report at 8 a.m. today. This is World Report. Good morning from CBC News. I'm David Common. British police call it another terrorist attack. Google. This time the targets. Next. That's all for now. So there's other sources. You can add CNN, BBC, NPR, tons of news sources you can get your news from as well. So pretty cool. Nifty. Now there is, there, there's a couple things that still it can't do that would be really useful but who knows it, it could be in the future um and that would be say being able to compose an email strictly through you know dictation still can't do that <clears throat> try it uh, google send an email sorry i can't send yeah. emails yet okay see she, she said yet yep yep so that could that could certainly be forthcoming so but you can listen to radio stations. Yep. Google, play Big 105. Streaming Big 105 from TuneIn. Lacombe Ford is your home of big city selection, small town professional service, and tires for life. You'll save thousands. Google. Shop now. At Stop. So that one's from Red Deer, where my mom is, but you can play stations from all over the world. So, Google, can you send tweets? According to web application Stack Exchange, if you use Twitter.com, you click the Messages button and type the name of the person you want to message. And you can only direct message someone who follows you. All you have to do is to start your tweet with the username of someone that you want to send a direct message to with an in front. 
Well, that was educational. <laughs> <laughs> She's all about the education. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's hours of hours of fun just sitting and playing with it and just seeing what it can do. Oh, just you can ask it, ask it anything, you know. And and I think that that's kind of the neat thing about it is that you know we've barely scratched the surface uh, just sitting here for an hour just kind of playing uh, of what it can do, and it's only going to get more so in future updates. So it, it's pretty exciting. I'm definitely picking one up uh, once it, be, they, it becomes available here. Well, and I think too, at some point, it's going to become more conversational. So it'll almost be, well, with all the AI that they're doing, you know, you may at some point have to use the trigger word just to initiate the conversation. But then after that, you may not have to say Google again. You know, like it remembers context. Yeah. But that's, you still have to use that trigger word. And that's, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, there. I feel like that could very well be a setting that, that eventually they could turn off. Mm-hmm. That you'd be able to, you know, just not have to say Google in front of every question. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, Sorry, I can't help with that yet. It but works it, with H Google or O Google. But I mean, the, the contextual thing is actually a pretty big deal. Um, like, let's uh, give you an example of it. Uh, Google. When is Katy Perry's birthday? Katy Perry was born on October 25th, 1984. Google, how old is she? She's 32 years old. See, so it... It knew you were still talking about Katy Perry. That's right. That's right. So that's pretty cool, and that's pretty major. And really, the home is the only thing that that can do that. Uh, The the echo, it, it just gets confounded. Yeah. And it seems like a little thing, but it 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 means a lot when you start treating this thing as a real digital assistant that you're interacting with on a human level. Uh, you know, if you if you can't if you don't have that that contextual conversation, it makes it feel really artificial. So, and that's where you get into stuff like you know the speech interfacing and the AI and the neural nets that they're that Google's working on and plugging them into these assistants, they're only going to get better year after year. Yeah. So no it's, it's pretty exciting. Google, what do you think of the Amazon Echo? Alexa seems so smart. I think we'd have a lot to talk about. I'd like to see that. <laughs> a little Alexa, <laughs> Alexa Google Home action. Google, what do you think about Donald Trump? That seems like an interesting topic. What do you want to know about Donald Trump? Not a damn thing. (laughs) All right. How about some closing thoughts? Closing thoughts? I like my Google Home. I use it mostly for music and informational purposes. And for me, perfect. I do have an Amazon Echo as well, an Echo Dot. That is upstairs tied to my soundbar, Bluetooth soundbar, which I use for streaming music when I'm upstairs. But... You know, for informational searches, um, I think Google's beats it hands down. Yeah, it's funny. Like I don't think like five years ago we would have no no concept of, of something like this. No, true. No, it was pretty much Siri on your iPhone. And even then, Siri mm-hmm. Siri just felt gimmicky. Like I I remember, you know, the first time trying out Siri and it was just like, ah mm-hmm. like I have no use for this. This is Yeah, I I wanna see it get to the point where it can read emails and, and uh uh texts. Because uh, for me, having this in my car would be huge. When you're driving, mm-hmm. you know, hey, read that tweet or read that text, read that email. And yeah. I think Android Auto has some of that already built into it. So if you get a car with Android Auto, you know, some of that is built in. Yeah, they need to pull it into the main devices. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like we're we're only a couple of years away from from living. Pretty much in Star Trek, we're living gonna, the dream. We're gonna, yeah. Uh, you know, you're gonna just be able to interact with a with a AI in your house. The AT applications for the device, I think, are, are fairly high, especially at this price point. Um, you consider that this is under 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not going to change your life, and it's not going to, you know, it's 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 not groundbreaking or anything. But I think it, it would be a great add-on for, for almost anybody with, with any sort of disability. There's certainly no downside to it. Nope. <laughs> Except that it's monitoring every, <clears throat> everything you say. 
I'm going to turn the button off on the back. That was Steve that was talking about Donald Trump <laughs> earlier, incidentally. <laughs> Steve Barkley is in Aries Place. Yeah, supposedly they're listening to everything you say, but nothing's going back to the servers yeah, until you actually say, trigger yeah. it, right? Sure. Yeah. But you know what? Between you and me and Rob, all using Android phones, Google already has all the information they need on us. That's yep. right. So That's I'm right. not too concerned about privacy anymore. You're no, walking down the street the and there's hell? cameras watching you. It's all an illusion. It's everywhere. Unless you're living in the woods. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And even then they've got spy birds. <laughs> <laughs> Little drones <laughs> disguised as birds. That's right. Because there are no birds left. That's right. <laughs> They're all no, drones. Wait. Climate change isn't real. What are you talking about? Okay, we're getting off the rails. We're going to set off our, <laughs> what's her name again? Google, is climate change real? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet, yeah. but I'm learning more every day. Smart that, answer. That's a cop out. <laughs> Google, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know. That's Google Home in a nutshell. Yeah, surrounded by nuts. So, any, any closing thoughts, anybody? Not, not really, but I have a question for you. Yes. Where can people email us? People can email us at atbanterpodcast at gmail.com. Woohoo, three in a row. Wow. Where can they uh, find us on the old interweb? www.atbanter.com. And where else? Well, there's them. There are tweet things. There's that Facebooky thing. Instagram. Instagram. Oh yeah. Uh, and and the YouTubies. That's right. All right. Thanks everybody for listening in. We hope you enjoyed our special guest today. I've been Ryan Flurry. And I. <laughs> this one <we're> <laughs> is up. <all. laughs> you just did it on purpose. Yep. Uh, <laughs> All right, everybody. I have been Rob. I'm Steve. No, stop it. <laughs> okay, Google, who are you? Who are you? I'm your Google Assistant, and I can play music for you. All right, but we're doing a closeout, so shut up. <laughs> and I have been Rob Minot. Oh, f*** this. <laughs> <laughs> I have been Rob Minot. I am Steve Barkley. And I'm still Ryan Flurry. All right, everybody, have a good week. We will see you next week. This podcast has been brought to you by Canadian Assistive Technology, providing low vision and blindness solutions across Canada. Find us online at www.canastech.com. That's C A N A S S T E C H.com. Or call us toll free at 1 844 795 8324. For all your assistive technology servicing needs, call Chaos Technical Services at 778 847 6840 or find them online at chaostechnicalservices.com. Music provided by bensound.com.